Last October, Governor Sununu formed the Northern Border Alliance Task Force to conduct added patrols along the northern border at a cost of $1.4 million. But U.S. Customs and Border Protection data shows that there were no reported apprehensions or encounters at New Hampshire's border with Canada during the first four months of 2024. Should more funding be going to this task force, given the few apprehensions that have been reported? Senator Morse, to you first. And the answer is yes. I, I believe what the governor was trying to do and the Senate proposed it was to add the tools for law enforcement and close our borders. And that was the intent of it. That's what we tried to do. You know, I went up to the North Country and I toured. I had a woman take me for a drive and she got out and she placed a stick on the side of the road and she said, this is what my husband and I come home to at night. That stick means the drugs are right over the, bo over the edge of the road. Same thing that's going on in Texas, because I went and saw it there. We have to stop the illegals from coming into our country and from coming into our North Country. Senator Ayat, your thoughts on this? I was just up at the North Country for Moose Festival. I met with local law enforcement up there, and they said the reason that they're not coming over the border is because they know, the illegal immigrants know about the incre increased patrols that we have up there. So I support what the governor has done on that front. But let me get back to the claims that Chuck Morse is making. They're simply not true. And by the way, this is coming from someone when in his own business, he could have used E-Verify to make sure that he wasn't hiring illegal immigrants, but he chose not to, which is the opposite of what my husband did in his small business. And he also killed the Sanctuary City Bill for New Hampshire, which we would already have in place, which is so important because we can't have what happened in Massachusetts where they spent a billion dollars housing illegal immigrants and they have sanctuary policies that are making their state less safe. So as governor, I'll get it done. Senator Morris, 30 seconds to respond. Well, let me be clear to the public. I would now support E-Verify, you know why? Because people like Kelly wanted 11 million illegal immigrants in this country. People like Joe Biden wanted 8 million more illegal immigrants in this company. They're making it so hard for small businesses. So yes, I would support it because it makes it easier for my company. But that's the reason I have to do it and we shouldn't have to do that in this country. Well, I can tell you actions speak louder than words. He never did it for his company. My husband did it for his company. That program's been in place for a long time. So if you're committed to making sure you don't hire illegal immigrants, you would follow that. And by the way, uh, when we look at where we are right now as a state, uh, Chuck Morse is the one who actually voted for the failed bail reform effort that has caused a revolving door of criminals on our streets, and that doesn't help our safety as well. As governor and a former prosecutor, I'll never let that happen. Criminals will face the toughest penalties in the country, especially violent criminals and fentanyl dealers when I'm governor. Senator Morse, 30 seconds. Yeah, let me just be clear. Actions do speak a lot of them words. No illegal immigrant worked at my company. And when it comes to bail reform, as governor, I will make sure that bail reform happens immediately. You know, Governor Sununu was the one that came out and said it was on his watch because he was sold a bill of goods. I will make sure that we take bail reform and reform it. Uh, Chuck was sold a bill of goods too. And not only that, but when they tried to make changes to fix the bail reform mess in 2022, he voted against it again. So I'm a former prosecutor. I know how to keep our state safe. Uh, I'm partnering with law enforcement. I've done that before. I have the endorsement, for example, of the M Manchester Supervisors Union. Law enforcement Senator. knows and the troopers that I can work with them to keep this state safe. All right, Senator Boers, 15 seconds on bail reform and we're moving on to another crime topic. Well, it's simply not true. You know, Kelly talks about her accomplishments in law enforcement. Where the hell was she when she was attorney general, when the Sununu Center was having problems with kids being raped and molested? Because those reports that came out said it was during her watch. So she either knew it or she ignored it. All right, we're going to move on to our... Oh, I'm going to address this. Uh, this is one of the most blatant lies that Chuck Morse has told. In fact, we were at a forum together on June 21st in Chester, 
And please, I urge your viewers to go and listen to him in his own words, knowing that this is not true, that I didn't know anything about that. ChuckMorseLies.com, you can hear him in his own words. And by the way, I'm the one who, as a prosecutor, I handled the rape and murder of a six-year-old girl. I held the Catholic Church accountable. I take protecting children so seriously. So I would urge your viewers, please go to ChuckMorseLies.com and you can hear him in his own words. He's just desperate right now because the polls aren't going his way. So now he's changing his tune on this. 30 seconds, Senator Morse, and then we're going to get back on track with questions. Yeah, I think if the public wants to go and read a report, Kelly, they should read a report on January 9th of 2009. It was sent to your department and you were there. And it basically talked about what was going on at the Sununu Center. And that's what the public should be looking at because you were the top law enforcement official in the state of New Hampshire during that time period. Uh, Chuck, you know okay. this is not true. You admitted it wasn't Senator, true. So please hear him in his own words. We're going to move on to another.